The patient is a 62-year-old male whose past medical history includes type 2 diabetes, hypertension, asthma, a myocardial infarction 14 years prior to the procedure, a history of a pulmonary embolism at the time of having an angiogram, mild chronic renal insufficiency with a creatinine of 1.4, and the incidental finding of a 3.2 centimeter left upper pole mass. CT shows a simple cyst on the right kidney, while on the left kidney the 3.2 centimeter mass is visible. It is obviously in the upper pole, being near the spleen. The mass is surrounded by a large amount of perinephric fat with stranding, suggestive of reactivity. This type of fat increases the challenge of any open or laparoscopic renal procedure. After retroperitoneal access has been gained, the tissue planes are entered. The psoas muscle is used as a landmark. Dissection is continued in the cephalad direction until the diaphragm is identified. As anticipated in this case, the greatest challenge of the entire procedure is the large amount of adherent and reactive perinephric fat. Fat dissection required multiple applications of laparoscopic ultrasound to identify the area of the renal mass and to dissect in the correct direction, as orientation is very difficult with this amount of perinephric fat. After complete dissection of the fat, the upper pole of the kidney and tumor are visible. The mass is seen extending cephalad from the upper pole of the kidney and is well characterized with the laparoscopic ultrasound. The border between kidney and tumor is better appreciated grossly with high definition images. After the mass has been characterized, a fine gauge spinal needle is used as a finder needle and multiple different angles of access are tested to identify the optimal angle for renal biopsy and ablation. After the proper angle has been established, a biopsy needle is used to take a sample of the tumor. Ice rod cryoablation needles are then deployed. For a mass of this size, three ice rod needles are configured in an equilateral triangle 1.5 centimeters apart. The needle markings facilitate placement to a standardized depth. In this case, to ensure complete ablation, the needles are inserted 3.5 to 4 centimeters into the tumor. The wider lines on the needles indicate the 5 centimeter mark and can be used to precisely establish the depth of the needles. It is critically important to confirm the precise needle placement using the laparoscopic ultrasound. The complete dissection of the upper pole permits multiple angles of ultrasound for precise characterization of the position and depth of the needles. With the needles properly positioned, the freezing process is initiated. Frost is often visible along the needles. The ice on the proximal portion of the ice rods is condensed at zero degrees and is not harmful to the patient's abdominal wall. The ice ball will be allowed to extend one centimeter beyond the mass onto the normal parenchyma. Extending the ice ball in this manner ensures complete tumor ablation as it includes an indeterminate zone as well as a margin of normal tissue. With high definition images, these borders are easier to appreciate and subtle tissue changes like ischemia become visible. An active thaw is then initiated and here the video has been accelerated. In this case, four minutes of active thaw are allowed so that the surface ice is grossly melted.
With the thaw complete, a second freeze cycle is then initiated and will continue until the ice ball once again extends one centimeter beyond the tumor, both grossly and under laparoscopic ultrasound vision. As a general rule, if the second freeze cycle has the same duration as the first, the ice ball will be larger. This is because the first freeze cycle has caused thromboses of the local vasculature, reducing the local heat sink effect. After the second freeze cycle has been completed, an active thaw is once again initiated. Careful extraction of the needles is required in order to minimize the risk of ice ball cracking and bleeding. After one minute of active thaw, the needles are twisted between the thumb and forefinger. If the needles easily twist without moving the ice ball, they can be safely extracted. Each individual needle needs to be tested independently, as one needle may be more engaged into the renal tumor and ice ball than the others. The final needle was gently twisted, which resulted in movement of the tumor. Additional active thawing was used before the needle was retested, at which point it was easily withdrawn. Once the needles are withdrawn, the passive thaw process is observed. A surgical hemostatic pharmaceutical may be applied to the area of the tumor. However, this is usually not required. In this case, flow seal is gently applied to the areas of the tumor where the needles were extracted. This patient recovered uneventfully and was discharged home on the first post-operative day. Histopathology of the needle biopsies performed at the time of the procedure revealed a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. Follow-up imaging performed three months post-operatively showed that the tumor is non-enhancing, consistent with a successful ablation. Follow-up will consist of annual imaging.